Good everyone. I hope you're having an amazing day. So today I'll be talking uh, in terms of the service cloud adoption strategy. That's the way I wanted to kickstart this uh, certification uh, series. Um, as you all know, right, this is a consultant certification. So my humble request is you, uh, you know, to to imagine it uh, from a consultant perspective. Don't study uh, for the certification just for the sake of it, right? You need to have a purpose why you wanted to do this uh, certification in the first place. So the way I look at it, right? So you might be consultants or you, you're working as a consultant. You might uh, go to a uh, consulting uh, firm, you know, and they put you into a project uh, to convince a customer who's always who's using sales cloud to get into uh, the service cloud. Okay, so let's talk it uh, a little bit from an adoption strategy point of view. Okay, well, I'll give you a scenario. Let's say I run a brewing company. Okay, so we we manufacture, we we produce a lager, stouts, a pilsner, whatever. Right uh, now, we have been using um, a sales cloud for years. Like sales cloud has been working very well for us. Like for for uh, in terms of an account, um, uh, in a contact, an opportunity, everything works very well. But apparently, the customers are a little bit uh, concerned about our uh, regarding our. Um, you know, customer support perspective, right? For instance, a uh, customer email us um, saying that, hey, uh, last batch of, so this is uh, Sticky Man, right? So this is a customer. Sorry, my apologies for my back drawing. So they email us uh, saying, hey, the last batch of the lager was a bit faulty, faulty in the sense that uh, the taste was pretty, a bit off. Uh, could you please give us a refund? And we kind of took uh, almost three weeks to respond to them, and that kind of pissed off the customer. And another way they try to do, they try to contact us using cell phones uh, or using our, you know, uh, toll-free number. And but unfortunately, it's always busy. Um, so, as the CEO of the company, you know, got very concerned that this is going to affect our customer service. Obviously, right? There are a lot of beers in the market. Why would someone? Uh, prefer to buy our beer when our customer service sucks, right? At the end of the day, you know, the service, the, the customer decides to buy your product based on the service, okay? Uh, because if you have to choose between the two similar products, uh, how do you go about choosing that, right? It depends on the service, right? If you'll be more comfortable um, in buying a product where you are aware that if there is an issue, they will get back to you ASAP and and try to help you with that, right? Uh, instead of buying a stuff from a product where uh, you know, whose products your know, customer service sucks, right? Have you ever wondered, for instance, like you know, I just don't don't want it to name any big companies. You call a company, you know, you call a call center, you know, you expect the call center service to be local, but it get routed to somewhere else overseas right and you have to wait 50 you know minutes sometimes an hour and then they transfer you to another department and then transfer and it adds a lot of frustration right all at the end of the day all you ask yourself right hey i paid for this damn product and i paid for the customer service why they're routing me to different international countries and uh you know and 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 then you know people and it it increases your frustration level and unfortunately you take frustration on the book person who is answering a call, right? It's basically not the fault of the person who's, who's trying to help, right? It's the fault of the entire process. So keeping that into consideration, so as a service cloud consultant, you can suggest, hey, you're already using Salesforce, right? Uh, why don't you try service cloud? Now, the service cloud might ring a black uh, ring a bell, and they say, hmm, so what is service cloud, right? And so as a consultant, it becomes your responsibility to convince, or I mean, or not to convince, or just to, uh, you know, put across the pros and cons of using service cloud. So the first thing you can say, hey, it's easy to use a customer service application that can help you provide and track excellent service. So the word excellent service, that rings the bell, right? And, and as a CEO of the company, I'll be very glad to hear okay so service cloud can do that for my business okay and it keeps your customer happy but you don't want to hear that right customer happy see you have to very very specific about the keywords you choose right when you approach your when you approach a customer um and also your uh support team happy right and it will not cause any sort of insanity um so now you must be wondering what is our service console that rings the bell it, it will help 
to keep our customer happy and provide excellent service at the same time. Okay, so you know you go to the Salesforce org. Okay, so let's look at bit around it. Okay, so um, so you, I won't tell you how to register for an org because the prerequisite for the certification is an admin. In admin, you would have already figured out how to register for an org. If you do not know, I'm afraid to say that this certification is not for you at this stage. Okay. All right. So we got two kinds of things that you, can, you know the service cloud offers. One is the service console. And um, so service console is pretty simple. So you go to this tic tac account and you look for a service. You just type for the service console. You can go to the service console because, you know, it gives you this nice looking uh, feel interface. Uh, because Service Console um, plays a very important role. It's like a help desk, right? Uh, which lets anyone in your service team see a, a personalized view of each customer in the case, as you can see here, right? So this is a case, um, and you can look at information about the contact details and the case is about, right? And you can have an attachment and, you know, milestones and other stuff, right? I'm just giving you an overview today. I'm not going to dwell into the detail nitty-gritty stuff at this stage okay just to give you an overview just to get make you feel comfortable okay so um, this is like how a service uh, console looks like okay and then we have something very powerful that's a case management this is as you can see this is a case management you can create a case um, it's like if so, it's like if someone wants to you know file a complaint or request uh, a feature or you know whatever you can do that using case right you can go to new and you can do that here pretty simple okay that's then you have other options that you have automatic workflows when you talk about this you're right you know when a case arrives uh you know the information can be automatically routed to the right person right so that's the cool thing right you don't have to manually assign to a person you can assign to a queue uh or to a you know to a person then you have knowledge base which plays an important role if you wanted to stay, uh, share an article with your customers, say, you know, usual to-do things or, um, or, you know, or or usually uh, referred article, you can do that using knowledge base, okay? Uh, then it also offers mobile and field service, okay? Um, because Service Cloud, uh, uh, you can use it using a mobile phone or tablet, right, if you're out on the field, which is pretty cool. Um, now, along with the service console, you have non-console aspect as well. That is normal service cloud, uh, which is pretty handy. You know, you can see all the stuff, accounts, contact reports, dashboards. And if you wanted to build a report, you can do that. Um, so this is pretty um, handy, right? And like I said, right, if you are interested to train your customer, you have to know the pros and cons. And this is one way you can actually convince your customer to say, hey, you can use the service cloud, uh, sorry, uh, service console or the normal service cloud. Okay, service console, like I said, it gives you a personalized look and feel. And it's very useful for a help desk agent to, you know, uh, to go through the case. It's very powerful at the same time. It has more pros, right? Um, so that's, um, and you can also, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, go to the classic view viewer, but that being said, I will not recommend using a class of you, okay? And um, so if you look at the cases, right? Um, so one other thing about the cases is that you can actually look at, uh, you can customize your views, okay? Now this is the recently view case, so you can see the case, what's the subject is about. about. Um, if you're after, say, all open cases, you can see that, and you can see the status new and the priority. You can also look for the priority and the contact name. So this will give you a, a simple look and feel about your cases and who's your customers and the, the priority and the status, okay? So this is how uh, easy to use the service cloud. And, you know, as a consultant, you can suggest to your user, you know, about, okay, so you, this is a way you can use it, right? So, so I'm not saying that customer will get convinced the first time, but you need to dwell a bit deeper, but for today, so this is just a basic overview about the adoption strategy. That being said, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in today's episode. I hope you have a great evening. Adios.